Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Tech CMO Talks featuring marketing leaders in the software industry. I'm your host, Connie. Today, we'll discuss how to take your marketing strategy to match with the developer bias journey. When we design our marketing strategy, we know that we need to provide relevant content that meets the needs and answer the critical questions of buyers at any stage of their journey. And while we know that the buyer's journey is not linear, as marketers, we always talk about the awareness, consideration, and the decision stage. Now, the way, as we know, developers buy software is a bit different from the economic buyers. And we'll discuss today how to tailor your strategy for success when you market to developers. So my guest today is a marketer and a data scientist. Previously, he was a professional chess player, a man of many talents. He's very passionate about developer marketing. Besides uh, leading the marketing function at a tech startup, he also runs a site called Developer Mark Peer. So I'm super excited to welcome Jakob Chacon, Chief Marketing Officer at Neptune.ai to our show today. Welcome, Hi, Connie. Jacob. Great to... Hi, Connie. Great to be here. Great to see you. Very warm welcome. So I'm really excited to discuss developer marketing with you because I saw that, you know, you have a lot of knowledge, insights, and experience about that. So in the next 20 minutes or so, we're going to dive into the subject. Um, awesome. First of all, maybe why don't you tell us a little bit about your company, uh, Neptune, and also your go-to-market strategy? Yeah, sure. So, um, so Neptune is a tool in the MLOps space. MLOps is sort of uh, similar to DevOps, uh, just in machine learning. Um, uh, and what we do is we help uh, teams that are building models do that more, uh, more uh, effectively uh, with more confidence by managing. Uh, all the model metadata that are, that are generated as you're building models. I mean, although all that may sound, uh, you know, technical, and uh, that's because it is technical. We're we're uh, marketing to to technical folks, and and um, and I think uh, in, in in our case, what's uh, what's very interesting is that um, as you mentioned before, uh, I was a data scientist, and data scientist is one of our personas. So we uh, we build our our tool for uh, data scientists and, and machine learning uh, engineers who are uh, you know, developing and putting those machine learning models in, in production. And, and I think um, you know, what's, uh, what's really great about this role for me and, and so exciting about uh, what's was always so exciting about uh, developer marketing is, is actually understanding who are you, uh, who, who you're doing those things for. Right, and in, in since I was a, a data scientist, it was a bit easier for me to understand, um, you know, what what sort of a language, what sort of uh, problems people have, uh, uh, where should we be, how should we talk, what should we do. Uh, so, um, you know, I think uh, that was uh, that was very important here, and it's 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 very important in in, in any marketing, but technical mm -hmm. uh, developer marketing especially to mm -hmm. uh, to understand. Uh, this uh, technical buyer that you're uh, creating content for or, uh, you know, building campaigns for. And uh, do you focus on, um, like, um, the enterprises or the end users? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so in our case, our, our go-to-market is, is, is bottom-up, product-led, um, developer-focused. A lot of uh, jargon here, probably, but uh, <laughs> we're basically going after those uh, those technical folks, after the data scientists and machine learning uh, engineers who are bringing the product uh, to their organizations, uh, mm -hmm. right? So, so the vast majority of, of what we do is 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 inbound, and a lot of that is self served. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, we have a free tier where people can you know try it out, actually use it uh, to a certain limit, and then when they uh, you know, when they need collaboration or they go over the limits, they they adopt uh, uh, the product on commercial uh, licenses. Um, 
Yeah, so so uh, up until you know today, uh, we focused on on this um, you know bo bottom bottom up developer um, mm -hmm. uh, go to market motion, mm -hmm. and yeah, and it's been it's been really cool, I think. So yeah, so we talk about like how the buying journey, the buyer journey of the developer is different from the economic buyer, but exactly how different is it? Yeah. Um, so I think, I think when you, when you talk about a typical uh, buyer journey for an economic buyer, it, uh, it uh, starts with, um, with awareness, then, then you go to, um, to evaluation of certain things, right? And then, uh, then you start using something. You know, there is a there's a trial and adoption. Then there is, uh, then there is uh, a typically you know buying or an upgrade, you know, event or something like that. And then, uh, then you know you try to activate that person, keep them, retain and grow those accounts, right? So what what is different uh, with uh, with developers is that. Uh, as you know, the evaluation is a bit different. So a lot of folks, when they they evaluate, they are already maybe they are they have already started using your product, right? So you th you may think, uh, especially if you look at it in a linear, uh, you know, way, um, that they are they have already you know done more, but they're just trying it out. They want to try it out and see if this this actually is what what they think it is. Um, and the reason that, that that this happens is um, developers are, you know, they don't trust the, you know, typical marketing content. They don't trust uh, the typical, uh, you know, uh, 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 website, you know, we we website copy and, you know, things that are, that are there. Uh, they want to go to docs. They want to go to the app. They want to try it out. They want to play with the API and see if it does what, you know, they think it does. Right. And, and so, Instead of uh, reading your blog or uh, you know or or learning about you know what this tool does from from the sales folks or or from from you know from the marketing folks through, uh, through the blog, uh, which typically would have been you know things that build this uh, you know uh, awareness and understanding of what the tool does, a lot of devs would rather go to code examples on GitHub. They try to go to uh, live sandbox. Uh, they try to try out the free uh, you know, free product and see see what it does, see what it actually does, not what you hope it does, not what you you know you you, you wish it did. <laughs> Overall, I think this uh, this the switch from from focusing on 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 persuasion, on solving typical you know on solving business problems, to mm -hmm. this um, very genuine interest in building you know in building and understanding mm -hmm. how things work in. In, in in things working, you know, mm -hmm. uh, is mm -hmm. uh, is is what's 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 different, uh, and it manifests in, in a lot of different things. And you go into jargon, you go into specs, you go into uh, how exactly does that work. So mm -hmm. you show the code, you show the results, everything like that. So um, so you try to um, to talk about um, more, more more talk about how and what more than why in many ways. Mm -hmm. um, so it's kind of like the features versus benefits, kind of what you should focus on in your communication, in a way. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Like, yeah, I, I think if if you had to choose one, then I definitely go for features, not benefits mm -hmm. with devs, mm -hmm. right? Because a lot of times when devs are on your page, they already understand the benefits. You know, they mm -hmm. might have heard it from other devs. They might have, you know, seen a blog post from someone. I don't know. They they mm -hmm. seen something and they sort of have a smell for what the benefit is. They want to see the features. They want to see how how you do it, how you do what you say you do, uh, mm -hmm. to make the the thing concrete, to make the thing mm -hmm. uh, believable. Uh, the mm -hmm. more you go into abstract, uh, mm -hmm. the, the 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 farther away you go from the dev. You chose the product led growth path, right? So you let people into the product, they experience it. Um, how do you activate and convert them? I mean, not just one developer, right? You want more developers maybe from the same organization using your tool. In, in, in our case, a lot of the times it's, uh, it's, it's, it's very organic with, uh, with us sort of helping people helping people buy and people are, mm -hmm. you know, uh, they, they see the value of the product. They, they go through, through, you know, great docs, great examples. They start using the product. They, you know, they understand the value. They understand everything. And, you know, our role is not to persuade them to buy, it's help them buy, 
-hmm. you know, and, and I, I, I overall think that uh, the uh, sales in many organizations, product led, uh, you know, especially will be about helping people buy rather than persuading them to buy. I mean, obviously, this is a this is a long term, you know, vision, and, and, mm -hmm. and you know how how this 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 probably you know could or should work, and you know, in my opinion, and and in most of the organizations, you combine the product led with sales led, and you know, mm -hmm. you have uh, all all sorts of things combined. But I think um, overall, you know, in the very educated market, um, mm -hmm. it will be about enablement and, and helping people, mm -hmm. uh, you know, go through this motion, helping devs convince their manager, helping devs or helping managers go through compliance and, and things like that, rather than, mm -hmm. um, uh, conv you know, convincing them that this is a valuable product. Because remember, mm -hmm. you know, we're marketing people or salespeople and devs are not mm -hmm. very, you know, they, they don't trust us as much. <laughs> Let's put it mildly. <laughs> right. So, uh, so, so, you know, they, when they raise a hand saying, Hey, I want to buy, or, you know, we're, you know, we're evaluating, you know, it's on you to help them do mm -hmm. it. And, and they will, you know, in a lot of ways, I think, mm -hmm. tell you what they need and, you know, and, and how mm -hmm. you can help them. So, so, you know, at the, at the dev level, especially the best thing you can do is enable people to do as much as they can self, you know, in a self-serve motion with great dogs, mm -hmm. great educational materials, yeah, maybe let's talk a little bit more about helping people buy, right? We talk about educating the buyers. Um, can you maybe elaborate on that? Um, at what stage of the buying process is this relevant in terms of product education? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so so I think uh, th this is this is actually a very interesting part because uh, you know typically you know if you think about you know marketing and sales and the year 2000 or you know 2005 or something like that like like you'd go with it's like you know you first you know that people get aware you know become aware of a product then you educate them then you mm -hmm. then they adopt it etc and as you mentioned at the beginning of this conversation you said that you know this mm -hmm. this this uh, uh this, this journey is, is very convoluted it's not linear mm -hmm. anymore so so for example you could be evaluating different solutions you know at uh um very early, or you could do that later, right? So you may actually go into the product and start using the product, and then you're like, okay, now I get it. So it's very similar to that tool, right? So then mm -hmm. I want to compare, right? I want to compare. Okay, mm -hmm. so how that how is it different? Because I have to co convince my manager, or actually, you know, convince myself that I should be using the paid product versus open source product, or mm -hmm. this product or that product. Like, there's uh, obviously a million uh, options in in the developer uh, tooling ecosystem, right? So um, so I think it's important to make all of those resources available at all times, right? So, so um, you know, obviously there are different stages of awareness, but um, uh, and each resource should uh, focus on that stage of awareness. That's the, that that I I truly believe in. So you know, if you have if you're talking uh, about a problem that you're solving, focus on the problem. If you're talking about the solutions on the market, focus on the solutions and how to evaluate them. If people are you know at a product aware. Uh, and they understand your product, talk about this product, uh, you know, deeper, go into use cases, et cetera, et cetera. Anyway, um, I think those resources, all of those resources are, are important. And, uh, and, and, and I think it is good to, to make them available, uh, you know, to, to folks. So um, even if you think about something like a, um, like a tutorial, that could, that could be used both um, on existing paying users to grow the mm -hmm. usage. It could be used at the level when they are evaluating the tool, they want to understand mm -hmm. what it does, what it doesn't do. It could be, you know, it could be useful before as they try to understand what it does, right? Uh, right. So, so I think you know, it, it, it sort of depends on 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 how people like to learn. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that's the biggest, that's the the most important part, because because um, for some people, like they will not believe anything unless they try it. Once they tried mm -hmm. it they can go back and, you know, and, and, you know, and, and look at other resources. Some people are mm -hmm. like that. They, you know, they just want to try it first. Some mm -hmm. folks are, you know, very docs heavy, you know, they want to, they want written content. They, mm -hmm. they want static written content, mm -hmm. you know, obviously, you know, people are different. Then there are folks who, who like mm -hmm. the videos, right. Especially yeah. the, you know, especially early. Uh, so I think having a mix of, of all of those things mm -hmm. is, is, is very valuable. And especially, mm -hmm. you know, as you, as you mature as a uh, developer focused company, you mm -hmm. should be adding those things and you should mm -hmm. have this, 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 this mix, uh, mm -hmm. uh, mix of things.
So from your experience, Jakob, what companies get wrong about developer marketing? It's marketing principles in, in many ways, right? You, you talk to the right people in the right place with the right, right language at the right time, right? That's great. But like, you know, and, and, you know, and if you have a person who's never been a developer, and mm -hmm. has never spoken to, you know, to a developer, right? Mm -hmm. um, um, you know, building the, the, the messaging and everything like that, and the organization isn't bought in into how strategically important marketing is, mm -hmm. then, then you're in trouble. Because then what happens is you don't connect with anyone, right? You, mm -hmm. It's very easy, and I see that a lot, is, is you know, a lot of uh, our teams have extremely fluffy messaging, and it's it's mm -hmm. it's it's fluffy to you know to, to, to the level of, of being painful, um, and and mm -hmm. and I think you know this uh, um, focusing on, on on those those core principles really, and and understanding like you know how do people talk about the product or your category? What what words people use? So all of the 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 voice of customer research. This is very important. Like if you have a person who is a who is your target persona on your team, which by the way is a great way to you know to have a sort of a check. Uh, whether you have any chance of resonating, you that, then you can really miss miss it, right? And I think you know, I, I think it's it's really really visible on socials. Um, uh, you know, a lot of companies they they um, the folks who are creating social content, especially for the company page, uh, mm -hmm. are they they are uh, th this is an afterthought for you know maybe promoting you know some some. Uh, blog post, but the person promoting the technical blog post is not technical, so they don't understand exactly what are the valuable pieces. So they try to put it in a framework of, you know, value, what is the value, right? What is, what sounds exciting or we're excited, you know, to do XYZ. But like, you know, is it something that, that resonates with, with your dev? And, you know, results, if you go through, uh, you know, uh, Twitter or LinkedIn pages from, you know, a lot of the companies is is no, is a resounding no. People are not connecting mm -hmm. with this, right? And mm -hmm. and um, um, and they can. Like you, you have companies that, that do that well. Um, one example that I uh, I cover on my blog and recently actually, you know, that there was an interesting discussion on, on Hacker News about that post. Um, is Superbase. Superbase, you know, mm -hmm. folks uh, folks are doing an amazing job there um, uh, with uh, the content they're putting out and. How that resonates with uh, with with their audience? They understand that audience. You know who exactly is that? It's not developers. Like it is developers, but it's actually backend developers using Postgres who want to switch, who are doing projects on the weekends. You know, it's like this is the level of of understanding of of that audience, and then mm -hmm. then you can connect. You know, if mm -hmm. you understand the audience this well, you can connect. Mm -hmm. But if you if you're like, yeah, we're building a product for devs. I mean. You know, is it a, you know, is it a Python dev doing machine learning who's just fresh out of university and, you know, and is super excited about research? Or is it a backend Java developer who is, you know, who is on the way to principal developer at a very old uh, German enterprise, you know, completely different persona, mm -hmm. you know, and, mm -hmm. and once you understand that, you, you're like, okay, so where those people are? And, you know, a lot of people would say, yeah, people on Reddit, people, you know, devs are on Reddit, devs are on Hacker News. Well, some devs are there, but which, like, exactly which ones, right? It could be that mm -hmm. that that actually you, you you have even segments of your audience in those different mm -hmm. places, and mm -hmm. it's good to understand which parts, you know, wh wh which part of your audience likes which content, and don't try to be, you know, don't try to sa satisfy everyone. Yeah. So understanding who is where, um, mm -hmm. you know, what do people want from that? You know, those are general marketing principles. Mm -hmm. but I think we often yeah. forget. Uh, forget about them you know? mm -hmm, exactly know your audience is very important it's the starting right. point i guess and, and yeah. in relation to what you just this talk about I, I remember i read your recent post where you talk about like marketing to developers but that actually there are many different communities of developers right it's just one term but actually um can you elaborate on that topic because i found it really fascinating you know that you have Folks at different levels, folks uh, focusing on different technologies. You have folks um, who are uh, at different uh, types of companies. This, this even the, the, this culture of startup versus freelance versus enterprise. You know, mm -hmm. uh, like it's different. It's it's completely different, right? Because like at enterprise, 
you know, at the startup, you know, you, you can you can choose your technology very, you know, you know, you, you have a lot of freedom to choose mm-hmm. uh, what you want to use, right? Mm-hmm. When you're at the enterprise, it's not so clear, especially, you know, like if if uh, you know if the if, if you want to use some some maybe newer technology, you know, there's more risk, etc. You know, uh, then again, you know, if you're a freelance person, maybe a you know a, a solo printer or something like that, mm-hmm. um, then it's completely different again because you know maybe you want to use the paid product, but the, there's no pricing tiers for you or something like that. Like you, mm-hmm. you know, like uh, you know, yes, you are a Python dev, you know, doing building building, you know, I don't know, uh, full stack uh, web apps. Um, but it's it's that the context is completely different, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And um, and and I think you know I I think it's just the, this this understanding um, uh, of, uh, of of who you're talking to exactly, you mm-hmm, know. And mm-hmm. um, and I'm not not saying like I'm not saying that that for every product there will be just like you know one place or anything. I, I think it's actually the opposite. Uh, so you have a product and and you have folks and you have those folks on Reddit, on Hacker News, on Twitter, on LinkedIn. On Medium, on that you know, uh, mm-hmm. uh, Draft Dev, um, you have folks there. Um, it's just different groups. It's just different groups of those people, right? Or some people go to conferences, some people go to meetups. Mm-hmm. So different mm-hmm. people, right? So people just enjoy different flavors of those communities. And mm-hmm. and what is spe- you know very special and very interesting about devs is is those uh, uh, how people enjoy those intimate. Uh, uh, fragmented communities. So, mm-hmm. so you have uh, those smaller groups on Slacks or uh, or uh, Discord, uh, mm-hmm. where uh, people are talking about those those very niche um, things that are interesting and important to them, um, and they uh, they they may be actually in several different communities and in those several different communities, the flavor, the feel would be different. So if mm-hmm. you went ahead and tried to push the same message in all those places, mm-hmm. you know, maybe it would land somewhere, but most mm-hmm. likely not everywhere. In your opinion, how will the developer marketing as a domain evolves in the future? I think, I think it's, it's, it's an extremely interesting place to be. And uh, for marketers out there thinking, you know, where where to go, uh, which niche would be interesting, I think developer marketing is extremely interesting niche. The reason for that is, uh, um, you know, I don't see the world in which we will not grow the percentage of of the population doing, uh, you know, development of software mm-hmm. products. It's mm-hmm. unlikely. This will mm-hmm. change. Obviously, we'll maybe do more machine learning, maybe more crypto, maybe more other things. Mm-hmm. But I'm quite sure that uh, developers as a group will be growing, and mm-hmm. uh, and um, there are a lot of uh, you know interesting and specific things in developer marketing um, that uh, that you need to you need to learn, and a lot of those things you learn as you as you market to devs. Um, and I think it's a, it's a great 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 place to to grow and. Uh, and and to get better at yeah so so I I'm I'm very uh, you know I'm very uh, positive I guess mm-hmm. on, on developer marketing as a profession for sure fantastic fantastic me too so last but not the least tell us about uh, your project your blog developer and math peer um, I mean it's really wonderful that uh, you're sharing your insights and learnings with the others um, why did you start this. I couldn't find anything valuable online about developer marketing, and as I, you know, as I, as I said, like you know, I'm, 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 I'm learning developer marketing. Mm-hmm. I, I, I really enjoy learning it, but you know, the things that I learned, uh, a lot of those things were, you know, general, uh, develop, mm-hmm. uh, general marketing principles adjusted, you know, to, to things. Mm-hmm. There weren't uh, that many people talking about it, or you know, I couldn't find almost anyone. Mm-hmm. Um, and I figured the best way to, you know, to find those people would be to start something and share, you know, what I'm learning, uh, and and see if that resonates with people and 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 connect with uh, with other folks in this uh, in this interesting developer marketing profession, you know, because I think a lot of the things in in developer marketing are not clear at all. Like, you know, some mm-hmm. things are, but you know, a lot mm-hmm. of things are not. Uh, mm-hmm. and, uh, and, and, and being able to talk to other folks and, and discuss ideas, discuss, uh, decisions, uh, that you've made or, you know, you're thinking about making, 
it was extremely valuable to to mm -hmm. to everyone and um I also found you know myself a lot of times uh writing something in a doc and then sharing it with my team mm -hmm. uh or uh just just as a thinking process I like to write you know mm -hmm. when I'm thinking about something just to structure the way I think and and then I was like all right if I'm writing this maybe I'm just gonna put a little bit more work in in you know in in uh in uh formatting it and structuring it and and then uh you know see see if it's valuable to to other folks mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and finally finally the last thing there was uh, um was this part and i i have this sub page on you know on, on developer market uh, market per, uh, uh called developer marketing examples you know i i really like swipe files you know i like swipe mm -hmm. files as i'm you know, I think, uh, you know, a lot of great ideas come from stealing from people that are way smarter than you. Um, uh, so I, I try inspired. to inspired. <laughs> inspire, exactly. So, so yeah, so, um, yeah, so I try to look at how uh, those different great companies uh, like, you know, Alzero, mm -hmm. Algolia, uh, Circle CI, mm -hmm. Digital Ocean and others do it um, mm -hmm. and try to, uh, to see which parts of those could be, you know, valuable, maybe not today, mm -hmm. but maybe in the future. And mm -hmm. then you find yourself, okay, so I should save it somewhere. So I figured I'm just going to create a swipe file where I put those things as, as I'm, you know, as I'm going through, uh, through my emotions and, mm -hmm. and share it with people. And, and it seems that, you know, a lot of people are actually interested in, mm -hmm. in, in learning uh, and in seeing all those different, you know, campaigns and ideas that, that mm -hmm. uh, some of the great developer focused uh, companies um are are using yeah. yes i i personally enjoy reading that so for our audience i really recommend you to go visit the site and there's a wealth of information you'll find the link in our show notes um on that so awesome thank you so much thank you connie it was great talking your to you knowledge and experience of this topic jacob really enjoyed the conversation and uh yeah Good luck with, uh, yeah, with your marketing. That's Thank it. you so much, Connie, and good luck with everything. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks.